experience, do you still follow that faith? No. No. I love the writings. I love the founders of the faith. I'm not a fan of the institutions. Um, I think that there's, there's an agenda to create a global economy by turning us all into consumers. And I think that's a big part of what globalism is, uh, is trying to do, you know, dissolve, break down all of our borders and turn us into one homogenized mass of easily to easily controllable manipulate, easily to manipulate yep. consumers. And I just have this, and this is just me, I'm just throwing it out there. I have this sense that, um, that the Baha'i faith has been hijacked by Zionists and globalists. And it would make sense because it's, it's a religious philosophy that, that would lend to that. It would lend to its, uh, you know, people being accepting of all that. But I don't think the agenda is right. I th and so that's where I'm at with it right now anyway. I'd love to go down the path of talking about commercialism and, and this constant uh, perpetuation of consumption, as you say, right? It's like, you know, this, and again, I live in North America, so I notice yeah. it most here. And, but, you know, having spent a lot of time abroad, it seems to be perpetuated globally, as you're saying. Um, this idea of the incessant desire to always keep up with the latest, and you always have to have the best, this egocentric drive to accumulate trinkets. Um, how do you integrate that into your understanding of that reality into your life? Like, how do you live when you know that? And how do you avoid it? It's funny, I think, because just my nature, and I think this may be the nature of, of, of most men, but we get manipulated out of this, is to be very minimalist. I remember like, uh, you know, as a kid, I didn't want new sneakers all the time. Like I, I liked my old sneakers. And even though like all the other kids were getting new sneakers all the time, I would wear the same ones over and over again. Even if like, you look at my style now, like I wear the same thing every single day, no matter what. And so we were talking before about it being extreme. I even like extreme simplicity. Like that's why I was really interested in the carnivore diet. Like if I could just so nail everything down, yep to just like these small parameters, I can go really, really hard because there's less distraction. Yep. So the more stuff, the more trinkets, the more technology, I think as a te technology has exploded, my psychosis has increased. <laughs> I think I'm getting crazier as technology has increased yep. because there's more, there's too much information yep. and we're constantly being bombarded with, um, it used to be that you'd be bombarded with messages from the television, you turn it on or, you know, billboards, it'd be out there. But now we carry it around in our pocket. We're constantly looking at it. We're constantly being stimulated. And so um, one of the ways that I would fast from that is I would I bought a dumb phone. A dumb phone is the opposite of a smartphone. <laughs> <laughs> 1998 Nokia or what? Uh, Old school? Yeah, yeah. The flip, flip phone? phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Can and, they, would they still connect and have good reception or not really? Yeah, it's yeah. good, but it's only good for talking. Oh. And if you want to text, you got to triple tap everything. I love that. So I did that. Yeah, it's I funny because I make jokes all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it feels better for me to be, to be minimalist, minimalist, but... I can't say that I don't I don't live a minimalist lifestyle because I have a family and I want to I wanted to do everything for my family that that you're supposed to do you know like I said we went to Disney World isn't that an interesting statement though right I know I know you're aware of that mm -hmm. you're, the words coming out of your mouth yep I actually it's funny because we we were never we never had a lot of money like growing up you know I, I had a, we had enough I had a good family my wife comes from they were much. Uh, they had more poverty than we did. They didn't have very much. My wife never expected a lot of me. It wasn't like she she wanted. I had to keep up the lifestyle with her. You know, she didn't even get braces until I could help her pay for them. So she didn't need much, and I was okay living a Spartan lifestyle. I, I think I it was just uh, yesterday I put up a video on Instagram where I said that um, it's your woman. You, you got to be stronger than your woman's fears. And you can't, you know, um, 
not live the type of life that you know is right because she's afraid of for safety and security. And my wife has been great. She supports everything I did. We, if we were still, if we were still hand to mouth. I mean, there was a time when I, I relied on food stamps, I literally did. And um, she would still be cool with me. But, and, and I created this trap, <laughs> not her. When I started making money and I would buy things for her, it made me feel so good. Right. Like I wouldn't buy a lot of these things for myself, like jewelry. But like when I can afford, when I was able to afford, I remember I bought her this really expensive watch with diamonds on it. And the sense of pride that I had, yeah. like, look what I can give you. And it was funny because like she received it. I mean, her face would turn red and she was, oh my God, like when she started receiving these things. And it didn't take, <laughs> it didn't take long for that in me you know, that big, that's it. Everything goes up, comes down. That sense of pride, like I want, like children, I wanted to spoil them because there was a long time where we couldn't do anything. And I mean, there were times where we were even going to turn off the electricity. But when I could, I was like, I'm going to spoil them. And there, there came a point where I had a hangover from it. And I remember one day, uh, I almost like, I kind of went into a depression. I was like getting anxious. I was like, oh my God they're gonna start taking it for granted. And I'm going to have to always, I remember having this conversation with my wife. I'm like, uh, I know you guys are getting used to me being able to buy all this stuff for you and we're living a really nice like, nice lifestyle. But if I can't, but what if I, what if I can't do this anymore? Right. And you know, would you still, so I started to have this sense of guilt. And this is, you know, these are all ways that I was wrong. These are all my beta blue pill conditioning that caused me to be this way. but. I can talk about it in retrospect now because I could see how I allowed myself to be manipulated by consumer culture. How do you avoid having your kids be manipulated by it? And do you? You know, we're both um, mm -hmm. very pro uh, great parent. We're both trying to be very unique and very uh, thoughtful and mindful in our approach. And, you know, I, I try to be so conscious of the words that I choose and the gifts that I buy. and how to make them appreciate it while still realizing that they're super privileged, right? Mm -hmm. Like super privileged, but it's very hard to allow them to almost shelter them from the nonsense that exists in this world and actually let them have an, an intelligent view. And do you care at such a young age? Like what are your thoughts there? Well, the first thing I would say is that as a parent, you got to realize that if you're spoiling your children and giving them the things that you want to give them, you can't expect anything in return. I just felt like sure. that was important to say because you can very easily grow resentful yeah. and be like, oh, you spoiled brats. I'm giving you all this stuff. You got to remember, wait a second. Uh, they didn't ask to be spoiled. Right. <laughs> you did it. Yep. And so I always, and that's why even I brought up the story. Like I remember like there's a really good visceral feeling that was associated with being able to provide. And there's also conversely a very bad feeling that's associated with not being able to provide. And yes. so you're avoiding that while chasing this desire of like, I want to feel good about myself. Mm -hmm. Totally an egocentric drive. Yep. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So my kids are spoiled. Yeah. And, you have four? Uh, and I don't blame them. Three girls and a boy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't blame them. Um, It's a good question, and I don't, I don't know if I'm I'm doing the best job <laughs> as far as like keeping them humble. You know, they go to private school, they they eat the best food possible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what I don't do is buy them a lot of stuff. Right. But it's interesting because I don't think that's something to brag about because stuff isn't the issue any longer. It's uh, technology. You know, I mean, once a kid has an iPad, it's over. What else does he need? He right. doesn't want toys. He doesn't right. want anything else. 